I don't want to be in a relationship where I don't feel myself. Totally. And for me to feel like myself, I have to be secure AF. Yeah. Would you get yeah. back with a partner that cheated on you? Once you lose that trust, what are you supposed to do? If the relationship is the right relationship, I don't think that it's work. How are you balancing motherhood with, with work? I want to stay home with her and just be home and be a mom, but who can afford that, you know? My biggest, biggest, biggest dream That's is too. to be a mom, is to be like at home. I have never had that feeling. I told my husband at once, I was like, I'm just gonna tell your mom at one point that maybe, maybe I just can't have kids. Ooh. Friends will come and go, guys will come and go, mm. but I only look at myself in the mirror mm. and I have to wake up to her and I have to go to bed to her. So mm. she's the person. back with another episode of Girl Let Me Tell You and Amen. we are back with our host, guest host, Chelsea Rendon. What's up, girl? Thank oh, you. Hi. Welcome for being back. We love your energy. We brought you back. Yeah, of course. So I love much. it. I'm here all the time, whenever you need me. <laughs> I love I'm it. Stuck at, I, I suck it. at winking. I'm sorry. I mean, you, my you... best friend, like, she does the cutest little wink. She does a whole little, like... Yeah, my winks always look like... And I can't... <laughs> I look weird. Yeah. You well, wink. we just want to say thank you for being back here, honestly. <laughs> Let's just all wink. Okay. All but wink like, to the wait, camera. I think, yeah, to the camera okay. versus to each okay. other, because we'll be able to Ready? see Ready? I'll start. I'll start. Oh, my God. <laughs> all right, here we go. Okay. okay. Oh, a little. That's like a little. That Does it settle? That was so. That's like an yeah. invisible yeah. wink. Yes. That's what I'm okay. saying. That's the point. <laughs> okay, shoot. Okay, I'm going to try to channel my inner Monica. Okay, wait. Oh, hey. that work? That work? that's a good yeah. commercial. See, why is it that I could do it as my friend, but I can't do it as me? That's, that's for a commercial. Well, you're an actress. Yeah. Oh, dude, that's why. Okay. That's why. <laughs> All right, guys, we're going to get into what's in your feed. This is something that oh, we've yes. been seeing. These are topics that we constantly see on social media or yeah. on our feed right now. The big one being the new Kim Kardashian Skims bra that has the... <sighs> the nipple in it, <laughs> you guys know what I'm talking about. Yes. It, it has gone completely viral. For those of you guys who don't know, Kim Kardashian released this bra on her skims. This video went viral. And it's a bra that you can see basically they have on fake nipple. nipples. They ha she has like fake nipples on there, so they're not yours, but they peek through the bra. Um, just before we get into the pros and cons right now, what are you guys' initial thoughts when okay, you guys saw it? I will tell you. Initial thoughts when you saw it. I opened my Instagram, I saw it, and I was, honestly, I was confused. I was like, wait, what? Because my mom has always been like, if, if I'm not wearing a bra, she's like, Pon tu, y tu brasier? And I'm like, I'm going to, mom. I just, should I wear this shirt or not? But she's always like, Pon tu, tu brasier, to cover your nipples. So I was just confused. I didn't have any opinion yet. But then one of my friends said it to me and was like, thank God, I can't wait to try it. Because she doesn't have, oh, she has nipples, but she doesn't have like, <laughs> she doesn't have like nipples like that. Like, that, like so she's up. never cold. <laughs> so it's just not, it's not, you know, I don't know. So, you know, I, I, I thought just, it was like, what did you like? What did you think for you? Did you think initially, oh, this is something that I'm actually down to buy? Or I you're thought like, like I, I don't need it because I have I have it already, kind of thing. <laughs> I'm like, I'm sorry, but like my nipples are my nipples. I don't need the world to see it. Like I won't get naked for TV yet. So like, why am I gonna wear yeah. a shirt that looks fake nipple? Like so you know, I'm saying like, it's like having a body double. No, it's not you. Yeah. I I, nah. I completely agree <laughs> with you 100 percent off that. I was like, I would never wear this like I would never buy it I understand the sentiment and there is a pro to this so like the big pro that a lot of people are pretty much arguing online is that it's first off meant for shock factor a lot of what celebrities do is for shock factor it yeah. is what it is there's the sex appeal aspect of it and it's helpful for those that maybe have suffered from breast cancer or maybe mastectomies or things yeah, of that which nature is a beautiful thing I think yeah that's yeah. that that completely makes sense again like I haven't experienced that so I don't know I what that like means. Like if, if, if there was an insert where somebody if like if they wanted to have a bra that here if you want this insert then it's supporting that community but like the fact that you just have it out there like I'm sorry especially because it's Kim K you just want attention she wants to be talked about. This is what we're, we're talking the about her. Like you know what I mean? Like she, she stays yes. being talked about. That is her Ivana, job. Yes. Her job yeah. is to keep us talking about her. Yeah. Chris Jenner is amazing. I don't really like the family, but they are amazing business people. Yeah, they sure and look, are. what are we doing? We're, we're talking, talking about, about it. it. But is it something that I think the majority of the USA, USA women or, or even around the world are going to look at and be like, 
I want that. I don't think of the majority. I think this is very, well, very when specific. When you talk about around the world, it's different because in That's Europe, it's very different. You know what I mean? Like, I even think about like old school yeah. TV, like you would see girls with their nipples no, out, like, you know what I mean? it's trending now, like young girls, like they don't wear bras. Like they don't, like, they don't have to, they don't need to. And it's like, why, for what? But so technically, it's, trending, a is, a trend, it's been a trending but is thing, this a thing? I just for models, know. for young girls. Like it just is. Wait, so there's like, a difference. It's like, it's Having a bra natural. is for support. Yeah, it's support. People, support. Like, like have I have boobs, boobs like and it hurts if they are not supported. Exactly. Right. But now people make it fashion, and like I'm all about free the fashion. nipple. Have the choice to show it or not, but don't make it like bleh, just because you want to be. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, I, I mean, it's not for me. I don't think it's we'll, going to be we'll for a lot of girls, but it might be for some girls. I didn't even know that was like, I know it's a thing, but I didn't know it was a thing to the point yeah. of where me they're going to release a product like me this. Neither, me neither, yeah. me neither. But okay. maybe that's what she's trying to do because she does. She, she always they, she's, she's always on top of she's, she's always trail. on top of shit and she's, she's always like the I, worst. I probably, yeah, I probably won't jump on that bandwagon. Okay, another thing that's been taking over social media, which I don't know why I'm doing the intro for this particular. <laughs> okay, I will. Hold thank on, wait, you. I'll, let, let me. You want to do it? Go, go, I am go. actually okay. disgusted. She is disgusted by this, so I will let you know. Apparently, there is a big. Boom right now for oh period gosh. facials, which is literally getting the blood that comes out of your body for women and people with, you know, this stuff and putting it on your face. And apparently it's like really good and packed with nutrients and it makes your skin glow. And I think this is mainly like influencers are saying this, you know what I mean? Ugh. Because dermatologists are actually saying that there's no proven benefits and it can actually be unsafe. Because red the red blood cells are like pro-inflammatory, uh, it may make skin worse. But like, I feel like that's the problem with social media. Like, I remember during the pandemic, everybody started drinking bleach because that was supposedly what? a good oh, thing. The, the pods, you know what I mean? So like the pods <laughs> or whatever, and that. like that was yeah. gonna help you. So it's like this is something that like if enough people talk about it and say that it's good, people will do it even if it's not good. I mean, I have a theory that you know, there's <laughs> you no keep but like I you guys there's, there's, I there's can't. PRP, PRP is vampire facial where they take the blood out and then the doctor takes the plasma in a machine, but injects, injects it into it. you, right. injects it but into they, you, not just lays this, it this on your face. Free, this is the the free ninety nine version of it you know like maybe you don't need uh, what I'm trying to specify is there is a different thing from the blood going in your body which it's gonna actually do something inside you know what I mean like Still again surface, so much yeah. medication you have to inject or ingest and then it does its job you can't just wipe shit on your skin it's not gonna do anything so like this is a free 99 thing but there's a big difference between it getting injected to actually being activate able to the follicles. activate the things yeah, yeah, yeah. versus just like Put it on top. Right? I would like ser F filters. Seri it's Instagram. It's all fake. <laughs> we'll I would see. just like we'll like see. serious scientific studies on like before. I need the before and after. Yeah, photos. I need before and after. I am I never facts, gonna just facts. jump on a trend just because the whole entire world is doing it. Let me just do this. It sounds to me, and again, like sorry if y'all watching this and you do this, but it just sounds so like I personally Gross. like my body can't handle it. Like I would literally die. In the and moment. then also PRP is regular blood, not period blood, but like. <laughs> Technically, if you have a partner that goes down on you while you're on your period, then it's a period facial. So like, I would ask people that do that, like, have they seen a difference? You know what I mean? Cause like, I don't do that. Or I don't, I don't agree with that thing, but some people might. Some people like period sex a lot. You know what I mean? So maybe they like period oral sex, which could be the reason why this came about in the first place. I'm honestly thrilled. <laughs> we gotta wrap it up after she, that. Yeah. <laughs> we'll wrap it up. Okay, look, if you guys have done it, leave a comment below. I would love to know what kind We've of done like your- what specifically? The period I just facial. Said <laughs> the period facial. Whatever Chelsea's talking about, just comment about that it. That or just like in general. Wait, is this happening in dermatologists? Like, is this happening professionally or are women just doing it no, in their bathroom? At the house, the crib. Okay, I know I just said some crazy shit. <laughs> and so if you are into this crazy conversation, keep with us because we have a fun episode right now. We're gonna have Angela Johnson Reyes. Yes, the queen herself, and Melissa Marty. And then we're talking situationships. Yeah. What is that? I don't know. I've never done it. So <laughs> stick with us. Stick with us, baby. Woo! Girl. Woo! I'm ready. <laughs> Bring it on, baby. Bring it on. Mm. OK, guys, there is a glamoury hot take that we need to talk about. Ooh. Is getting back with your ex settling? That's layered. I know we did. We, 
Like, what if you get back with your ex that you were really in love with and he wasn't ready and you broke up and then you get back with him and well, so like, that this depends. might come If true. it was like 10 years later or five years later, it's a different thing. But if you broke up and then get back together in a month, uh, then yeah, it's no, a little no, bit no. messy because you haven't dealt with everything. Yeah. Did he take accountability? Did he not? Yeah. Like, that gets involved. So, if it's quickly, it's settling in my mind. Yeah, if you're getting back with them right away, a lot of the times when you break up with somebody, I think that loneliness sets in. Yep. You start really forgetting about maybe the pain they're causing you on the daily. Yeah, the bad things. You know, all the bad things where maybe they're just not being loyal or giving you the love and attention or speaking in your love language or at least putting in that effort. And then you get lonely and you're like, well, I'm in bed, I'm alone, I'm sad. Let me just reach back out because it's familiar, because it's yep. something that you're comfortable with. And then that's kind of when, I don't know, I've been in that cycle where you're on and off for so long. So I've been, I've stayed in relationships, I think way longer than I should have because it is that mm. comfort of going back to someone even though I know it's hard they are not to good detach. for me. It's hard to detach. It's but so you hard. were mentioning how like you learned to love yourself and to choose yourself from one of your past relationships. Yeah, well I think one of the biggest things is the relationship ended for a reason, yeah. right? And when you get lonely, you forget that reason. Yes. But like one of the things where my friends say I'm kind of a robot because in my last relationship, I was done and I was done. And the thing for me was I realized that the person I was in love with didn't exist anymore. So like there was nothing to miss. There was nothing to or be like, you know. if we get back together, it's still gonna be there. It was like, no, this this person was putting on a mask, playing a say, character. Or never even existed. Exactly. Never like even so existed. he was playing a character. So then know? once I realized, oh, that wasn't him, he didn't exist then I don't miss him anymore. But I miss that idea sometimes though. I'm like, yeah. but it's not real. It's not but real, it's not but real. I still that miss That means you need to it. find a hobby. Okay, <laughs> would, you get, would you get back Damn. with a partner that cheated on you? I don't think I could. You've never done it? Like in high school, I think. I, once you lose that trust, what are you supposed to do? Like That's now I can't thing. trust you to be alone if I'm going out of town, like, the, Every relationship to me is all based on trust. Exactly, like once you break the trust and if you do at the beginning, like it's a wrap for me. And I yeah. don't want, I'm not a person that, I'm not that kind of girl that wants to be looking, wants to be knowing, but like if you give me a reason, then you're creating a, a, a unstable foundation for me for the rest of the time. Yeah. Well, again, he's now making you feel uncomfortable and you don't feel comfortable and in your relationship. Yeah. You don't feel safe. Exactly. And your partner is supposed to make you feel safe. I feel exactly. like if Period. you are gonna bring, if you are gonna get back with somebody that's hurt you, you have to make the decision to, if you're truly gonna try it, don't Ooh, bring yeah. it up all the time. I mean, yeah. you yeah. have to yes. fully, let it go or move on because if it's something mm -hmm. that's going to keep lingering and you're going to bring it up at it's every argument, yeah. you're going to keep bringing it in. I used to do, like I, it's going to yeah. it's going to be no, toxic. No, I told that to my friend that got cheated on. Like she finally told me after like six months or a year after it happened, and they were still together. And I was like, but if you're staying, you can't make him pay for it exactly. every day because exactly. you're making the choice now to stay. Yeah, you're making. So the choice. you're putting yourself in that position yeah. now. If you're unhappy with it and you want to punish him, then really leave. quickly is like, if you want to cheat, then just don't be in a relationship. Like you, ch you're choosing to be with me. We're choosing to be in this relationship, yeah. right? So if you want to cheat, then don't be in this relationship. Go do your thing and then come back if you really want to be in a relationship. You and that's I mean? where it gets messy yeah. because now it's like situationships mm -hmm. and then like dating and casually dating. And what exactly does that mean? And I think situationships are that where like you think you're committed, but that person doesn't think they're committed and they're doing their own thing. Like, think, you know what yeah, I mean? So I like, what's the definition, I guess, for you guys? What's a situation ship? I think a situation ship is like you guys are dating, you're hooking up, but you haven't had the conversation of being exclusive. Mm. So like you can't really tell me, like you can't ask me what I'm doing on a daily, daily basis, or if I go on another date, you have no right to tell me that I can't do it. Because but then we, you're okay with we the... haven't. No, but I can't. But I am not. I'm not allowed to ask him if he went on a date yesterday or nothing. I, that's his business because we haven't solidified that we're exclusive. Do you guys feel like the reason why there's so many relationships like modern now, right now, because there's so many people that just don't want to commit is because social media, I think, has given us this illusion of options of, okay, the grass is greener somewhere else. I think, I don't know, this could be controversial, but a lot of women, I feel like, get a lot of attention online. So do men. It's so easy to access other people mm -hmm. that sometimes you feel like, you know what, I don't want to work through these issues. I don't actually want to stick it out long term. Part of it, I think, goes into social media. We need instant gratification. Yep. We need that instant reaction. And if we don't get it, then we think there's a problem. And, and, and a, we don't want to work through it exactly. when, like, that wasn't the norm before. And a commitment, exactly. And a commitment is, is tough. Like, it's a commitment. 
like you have to be ready for to work together and yeah. to be there for each other. Like I, I said that with the, my boyfriend that I was dating. I'm like, do you really want to be a boyfriend and girlfriend? It's a commitment. Yeah. Like, well, you I think can you be made a free good... and do what you want. We don't have to be serious. Yeah. You made a good point on another episode where it's like, they say relationships is work. And it's because both of you have to put in the work. Yeah. So, so the point <laughs> is, if you're in a situation, Chip, and you know what, you want to get things cleared up, just be honest and speak your truth and be like, have you know, a conversation. I, want, yeah. I, I want more or I want less or this bothered me because there's nothing worse than like having a lump in your throat and not speaking mm -hmm. your truth. All right, what is the situation ship to you guys? We're gonna be answering that, plus mm -hmm. talking to the Latina queen of comedy, Angela Johnson Reyes, so don't go anywhere, we'll be right back. How are you balancing motherhood with, with work? I wanna stay home with her and just be home and be a mom, but who can afford that, you know? And there are women who can, and God bless you, but a lot of women can't, and they gotta get back out to work. Yes, joining us on Zoom today, the hilarious Angela Johnson Reyes. Angela Johnson Reyes, known for her iconic character on Mad TV, has garnered a massive following of over 75 million viewers <laughs> through six <laughs> successful comedy specials, including the recent Say I Won't. I'm approaching the age where I'm gonna start getting my clothes the same place I get my groceries. <laughs> Say I won't. You will catch me at Costco. Yes. Her book, Do I Think I Am? Stories of Chola Wishes and Caviar Dreams was released last year, and she's set to star in Prime Video's holiday comedy, Candy Cane Lane, alongside Eddie Murphy and Tracy Ellis Ross. Angela and her husband welcome their first child, Rosalie, in June, and when not touring, they divide their time between Los Angeles and Nashville with their dog, Banzo. What's up, <laughs> Welcome. Hello. Hello. What a mouthful. That's so much to say. I apologize. <laughs> No, it's okay. We need to give you that also, intro. Tell them the recipe that I just made last night on Instagram. Like, tell them all the things I'm doing. <laughs> I know. We had to do it for you. We're so excited that you're here. You're obviously iconic. We grew up on so many of the incredible comedy skits that you'd put out. I mean, I'm pretty sure we all did, oh, right? Yeah. We all oh, No, yeah. in my head, you're my best friend. <laughs> yeah, I'm like... Like, I'm we've like, met a few times, but in my head, you're my best friend. I'm fangirling <laughs> right now. Like, and geez. just like we grew up with you, we also seen that you've grown up. You're in a completely new chapter, I feel like, mm -hmm. of your life. I want to kind of talk about what that transition's been like, you know, into motherhood and everything, also being in the industry, being a career woman, how's that been for you? Especially because you said you didn't want kids for so long, right? right? That's right. Right, the transition, so many transitions happening. Like even right now hearing you guys say, I grew up with you and I'm like, wait a minute, we're not the same age? Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like we grew transitioning up together. into being older, transitioning into being a mom, put them together, an old mom, it's just a whole bunch of stuff happening <laughs> oh over here. God. No, you um, young, you young. It's been wild. It's been um, very, I didn't know what to expect in this motherhood journey. So I'm just kind of taking it one day at a time. And then every day calling my mom and asking, what did you do for this? How did you do this? So going into that, do you feel like you are kind of your mom now? Like you thought your mom was a certain type of way or you thought your mom was crazy. And then you're like, oh my God, I'm my mom now. Like, do you feel yeah. that? I feel like my mom was more relaxed than I am. I think I'm more stressed out. My mom had four kids. She raised them by herself. By She had all her four kids by the time she was 30. I'm having my first kid at 41. You know what I mean? Like we're definitely different. She was more chill, like doing it all by herself. And like my sister and I, we would go cruising like when we were 14, 15 years old and coming home like midnight, one in the morning. And I don't know how she did that and did not like like sleep at night. How do you even do that? Because I'm stressed out if my daughter has like a stuffy nose. I'm like, oh my God, what do I do? <laughs> well, I think it also depends. What what kid are you out of the four? Like, where do you rank? I'm in the middle. You're like, in the middle. Yeah, I'm in the middle, middle too. I share the middle, but. They um, always say that the first baby is when, I don't know, I'm not a mom yet, but they say that's like the baby that you're the most scared about. Yeah, like you're scared of like picking sure. them up, putting them down, and you're really paranoid. Mm -hmm. And then as as time goes and you have more children, or if you decide to have more children, then it gets a little bit more relaxed. Like You're like, eat dirt, it's fine. They need the <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, just pick it up off the floor. <laughs> exactly, yeah. that's what it is. Like, germ schmerms, like just live your life. And my mom was the youngest of eight children. So she was the kid that was just like, go live your life. And so I think that kind of 
played a part in how she parented as well. I want to know is you're obviously on social media um, and people tend to insert their opinions sometimes about all aspects of life. I'm sure motherhood is mm. so intense, so aggressive. So many strangers sometimes feel the need to maybe comment on parenting styles or they think they know better. How are you maneuvering that? Are you getting a lot of that? So luckily, I, I do get some, but for the most part, it's people saying like, hey, we tried this. And I love that kind of information. When they come at you with like, you should be doing this. That's when I'm like, skip, skip. You know what I mean? And then I have this one fan. She'll like every day unsolicited, give me advice. Here's your daily Tuesday advice. And I'm like, ooh, I didn't ask for it. But OK, here it comes. And then like she'll like send me messages. And sometimes I don't even read them. She's like, girl, I don't got time for this today. And every now and then I'll read it and be like, oh, that was actually pretty good. Should I go back and read the ones you sent me? From <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that actually worked. Yeah. And how are you balancing motherhood with with work? It's hard. Um, it's hard. And here's the thing. It's like I, I want to stay home with her and just be home and be a mom. But I have to go out on the road and travel and do my shows so that I can afford to be home on the days when I get to be home. You know what I mean? So it's like it's part of me wanting to still be creative and be out there but then a big part of me wanting to just be home and be a mom and I've heard that from so many of my friends and family members that are just like I wish I could just be a stay-at-home mom but who can afford that you know and there are women who can and god bless you you know more power to you but a lot of women can't and they got to get back out to work my mom I was asking my mom even just today I'm like how long did you breastfeed me she's like only six weeks because I had to go back to work all my kids only got to breastfeed for six weeks because I had to go back to work and like that is that's tough, you know, and I'm grateful that I get to like fly away, do a show and fly right back and and get back in time to, you know, only miss one day of my daughter. But it's hard. Well, Angela, we got something called the rapid fire questions that people comment and they ask questions and we want to we want to ask you some quick questions. You have do a little time to answer. And we're gonna, like, quick answers, quick answers. Yes. Let's go. Let's go. Let's the go. first one. What animal would you describe your husband as? <laughs> Maybe like a giraffe. Like what's something that always bumps into you and you're like, oh, yeah, did you not see me right here? Is he really tall? A giraffe? <laughs> I mean, he's tall, but I'm just trying to think of something that's just like, maybe that just, just bumps you and just keeps, they're like, oh, I didn't see you there. They just keep going about their life. Like I feel like a giraffe feels like lanky and like hits you. <laughs> okay, perfect. A giraffe. What's a phrase you feel like you say way too much? <laughs> I hate you. And I mean it in the most loving way because that's what I say when somebody says something or does something really funny. My response is, "I hate you." Oh, yeah, yeah, I hate yeah, you yeah. Too much. But okay, then it's what, like it's negative. But the, I mean, I, I don't mean it negative. I mean it like what depends on the way you say it. Yeah, yeah, yeah right, yeah. right. So we 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 understand that. Okay, one word to describe your new comedy special. Hilarious. <laughs> I like this one. Who's your favorite comedian? Uh, Nate Bargatze. Ooh. Well, Angela, you're so incredible. Thank you for taking the time to talk to us all the way from Nashville, I believe, is where you're at right yes. now. Nashville, Thank Tennessee. Uh, where can everybody find your comedy special so everybody can tune in? You said YouTube. So go to YouTube, look up Angela Johnson Reyes, Say I Won't, and it's streaming right now, and share it with all your friends and family, and just laugh and have a good time. Thank you, girl. Yes, we Thank love you it. So Thank you so much. Angela. Bye, ladies. You Bye, Have a beautiful rest of your day. <laughs> It is me first, me second, me third, and then all the you I know, all the <laughs> else. I know. Again, all the it's like influences. it's the person you have to look at in the mirror. As long as I, I do what she wants and I'm yeah. honest and true to her, mm. everything else is gonna fall in line, guys. And we are back, and we are ready to welcome our next guest, Melissa Marty. Intro. I have to do the official intro. Born in Puerto Rico, Melissa Marty is one of the most beautiful faces of Hispanic television and certainly has one of the most noblest and most charismatic hearts. A versatile actress, dancer, and singer, she represented her hometown of Caraguas. Caraguas. Damn it. I said it wrong. I knew I was going to do Girl, that. Girl, the Puerto Ricans are going to come after yeah, you. Yeah, they're coming after you. Caguas. 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 And, if and, I, and if I say something, my grandmother's going to kill me because she's going to say, you're from Mayagüez, which I was born in Mayagüez, but I grew up in Caguas. I feel more. That's your home. Okay. Yeah. And as you wow. can tell, I know her. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh, welcome. So, hi. Thank you, guys. It's welcome. so fun to be here. 
here. I'm so excited we, to have you here. I feel like you have a lot to say. Yeah, After our last segment, like, she was like, I have right. opinions. Okay, now I want to ask, like, what was the tea? Because you walked over here like, girl, girl I have to say stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me we tell you, I was, I was listening to y'all talk about relationships and Do situationships. Tell. And that word situationship is new for me. But I have been in a relationship for 19 years. Um, yes. That's Round commitment. You don't hear that as much. like five years old. Hi, <laughs> <laughs> Kelina. Kelina. Um, no, we started in college. Uh, we knew each other since high school. We were okay. very good friends. I actually hooked him up with his first girlfriend. Oh. Wow. So we were like really good friends. And living through that, we did five and a half years long distance. Wow. So I can sit here and say that I have been through anything and everything that's probably meant to break people apart Ooh. and we've surpassed it. Wow. And Please there is nothing how. more beautiful, in total honesty, there's nothing more beautiful than being able to sit with a person and have that longevity because there is so much, and I, and I get chills talking about it, there is so much more intimacy and mm -hmm. so much mm -hmm. more groundedness and so much more security because I, I i heard you at one point you said like oh there's it doesn't make you safe yeah did you ever feel those things before oh a thousand percent we broke up we broke up at one point yeah. we broke up at one point because we had been doing long distance for a long time and i didn't see the end in near and uh, I was over the distance yeah. and I didn't want to get on another flight and I didn't want to have to say goodbye again yeah. and I had met another guy. Ooh, oh, that's where it gets, that's where it gets I sticky. had met another guy and I got, so to say, I, I, don't, I don't think I was confused because I did break up and I did end up dating this other person and he dated some other people too, but it was always very clear to me that it was, it was always a comparison, right? So I was always wow. comparing this guy okay, to okay. how my now husband, Nelson, made me feel. And mm. I would always say, like, Nelson would never do this. Nelson mm -hmm. would never speak to me like that. Nelson would never da-da-da. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and that mm. that goes to show you. But allowing yourself, I feel like, I, I don't remember if it was you or you, Chelsea. Somebody said that now people don't want to go through and the problems the and do the yeah. work. Yeah. I've been asked, is, is being in a relationship work? If the relationship is the right relationship, I don't think that it's work. The work comes from you trying to keep it fresh, you trying to mm. keep it new, you trying to keep yourself and your partner engaged, the keep on dating type of situation, mm. you know, like not getting like complacent and bored. For right. like just you have to like keep dating each other. Yeah. You right. have to right. you have to make it fun and you have to make it new and that's where the work is. But then what about like the tough conversations? You allow the person space. You allow the person space. And, and the one thing that I have learned for myself in my relationship, my husband and I are very, very different human beings. I'm a Leo. I'm very, uh, very yeah. passionate, very yeah. like outspoken. Very, and he's an Aquarius. He's very chill. He doesn't like, he's, an alien. he's like, doesn't, you know, he's like, <laughs> Wait, Aquarius let's not. is like January, right? February. He's February 6th. Okay. Uh -huh. like, like My boyfriend is Aquarius. Yeah. So it's like, they, they match very well with feisty, characteristics of, of their partner just because they're 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 easy going. You yeah. know, not to say that they're easy I hate people that about my though. Man, though. He's too chill. Same. But, <laughs> but, but, when, but tell me if not, like when he has an opinion, like he will get it across. Oh 100 percent One hundred percent He's just I think they're smart. I think yeah. they're smart. They don't. They, have they like don't. A longer fuse. They don't overstress yes. the little stuff, you know. And that's that's really beautiful. They let you do what you want to do. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. Incredible. If they don't order something, they won't do it. Yeah. yeah. So I was gonna. I was saying that like my my husband and I are two very different people, and the beauty about it is like we will approach a situation in two completely different ways, mm -hmm. and he allows me to be me. Mm. And I allow him to be to be him. I don't try to change him. I don't try to control him. He doesn't try to control me. He will tell me his opinion. Yeah. And he will call me out on on my things. Like when he thinks like, hey, you maybe you should see this this other way. Yeah. Or maybe you shouldn't like have done this. Perspective, like a perspective. Perspectives and allowing for for that to exist in a relationship is very important without taking it personal, yeah. mm. without feeling like the person is attacking you, well, knowing that they come just, from love. Yeah, yeah, it's also being able to be an adult and have accountability, is yeah. being able to hear a different yeah. perspective. A thousand percent. You know, a and I think percent. that a lot of people growing up, we had to be so defensive or so protective mm -hmm. that like, we don't, we're not used to that. Mm -hmm. And it's like, no, it's my way. Oh, you don't agree with me, then it's a problem. We don't think the same and it's exactly. a problem. Exactly. When but it's actually not, not the problem. Yeah, it's not that actually case. creates a space for growth and for like, you know, you coming together. And, and, and truth, 
truth of the matter is you're never going to see things the same way because mm -hmm. you're totally different human oh, beings yeah. with different backgrounds, with different things that affect your opinions, mm -hmm. and that's okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, what do you have to say to women that have maybe been in long-term relationships that want that next step? Because I know you guys had taken... We took a year, a, like a year and a half, we broke up. Okay, but you guys were dating before you guys got married, like 10 years, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. Wow, okay, so personally for you, why do you think, was it because you were in your career too much? Or like, what for you? Because there's know a lot what? of times people say, if they don't marry you within this amount of time, then it's not real. Obviously, your your case, that that wasn't the case. In in my situation, particularly, he, it was funny because when I went for Nuestra Belleza Latina, his mom actually told him, he's like, oh, she's leaving for the show, she, you know, she, I was living in Puerto Rico, I was going to Miami, and he's like, Oh, you might want to put a ring on it. And mm. I remember sitting down with him and telling him, now is not the time to ask me to marry you because I'm not going to say yes and you Ooh. want me to say yes. Like, this isn't the time. I've always known where I want to mm -hmm. go in life. Mm -hmm. um. and, and I have always known that the person that I have to be accountable with is the girl that I see in the mirror yeah. every day. Yes. Not anybody else. Yes. Friends will come and go. Guys will come and go. Mm. We love more than one person in mm -hmm. this lifetime, mm -hmm. but I only look at myself in the mirror mm -hmm. and I have to wake up to her and I have to go to bed to her. So mm -hmm. she's the person that yeah, I, I know. Owe. I'm like, deep, deep, I owe all, deep. Deep. You. all this talk, honestly, is a perfect segue into our segment called Calladitas No More. Okay. What is one piece of bad life advice someone has given you? I will say, okay, <laughs> I actually said this earlier. Um, my mom gave me advice to move in with my boyfriend when we had only been together for like six months. And her reasoning was to save money on rent. Uh -huh. And I'm like, why yeah. would you tell me to move in with someone within six months to save rent? Mm -hmm. When at the time I was making six figures, I could have done that shit by myself. Yeah, so why are you giving me that, that advice? And I still have this fight with her to this day. And she's like, well, but I just wanted you to save money. I was like, I was paying 75% of everything anyway, mother. <laughs> um, so that for me is bad advice. I think everybody's gotten really bad advice. There was one guy in particular, like in my early 20s, that was absolutely perfect. And and I honestly, to this day, I you know, I still think about, the he was kind of like the away. one that got away uh -huh. in, a, in a sense. And I had all my homegirls telling me, it's too young, like you still need to explore mm. your options. And yes, I'm all for, in your 20s, like I get it. Mm -hmm. it's, you know, do your thing. But I also think if you find someone that really aligns with you morally, family values, he's, you know, gonna be there. Like you said, there's something so beautiful you about grow. having somebody long-term with mm -hmm. you. And I think it's lovely. I think it's, anytime I see a couple that's made it through their teenage years into their early adult years, into their late adult mm -hmm. years, I think it's like the most, beautiful, inspiring thing. You don't even hear that happening as much yeah. anymore because you do change so much. Yeah. But he's that person that I'm like, I wish I had maybe put in a little bit more of that effort with him because. Yeah. Where is he now? Um, I, I have no idea. Like, Are I haven't talked to him. So the bad advice no. was to break up um, with him. Like, yo, the bad, what's the bad, this we, guy's name? <laughs> whoever, you know yeah. who you are. Yeah. 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 The funny part is I don't think he knows who he is because I never really expressed it to him and I think that's what oh. I regret was well, never, never really go. Nope. I'd have to go like to the other side of the country probably. That's okay. <laughs> I, have know I haven't heard from him in forever. Sometimes but. I feel, um, and this actually ties into some of the bad advice that I've gotten. Um, when when my now husband and I had broken up, like I I flew cross country overnight to get broken up with because he didn't want to move to LA at that time. Long story short, the long the the wrong advice that I've been given is maybe not listening to your gut. Yeah, or having somebody be was. like. Yeah. Like why? I don't think yeah. you should do that. And in your gut, you're like, yeah. I know this is what I need to do, There's even that, if no. it doesn't align the with God, what no. other people think. Or like, because again, I don't care. That's that's your life. It's that's so that's true. that's good for you. But it's not what I yeah. need to do. Yeah, and like you're gonna find a guy like him later. And like, like had how? I not gone gotten on that plane and gone to go get my heart broken into a million pieces, I don't think we would be where we are today. Wow. Yeah. Because it, it also gave me the, um, the realization of like, hold up, it is me first, me second, me third, and then all the outside Again, all the outside it's like, it's the person you have to look at in the mirror. As long as I, I do what she wants and I'm yeah. honest and true to her, yeah. everything else is going to fall in line, guys. You're so everything true. else. Yes. Yeah. I'm excited. We're going to get another question real quick. Do you think men should have an age limit for when they have kids? A lot of the times the conversation is about women, and I get it. There is that biological clock aspect of it. There just is. 
But with men, you don't really hear that conversation as much. You hear about, who, who are those two um, famous people that had like kids? I want to say well into what is Al it, their Pacino 80s? And, yeah. Yeah. Al Pacino and like, yeah, yeah De Niro. Why, is, why, why are these men having them? What? Are, can you even pick up your child? Like, because no. they can't. Because they can't. Because they, can. yeah. they, can. they have people Man, around them. To, 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 yeah, these they have these rich or famous. Well, we only know about richer people. You yeah. know, exactly. old people still be doing that in exactly. basic. Towns. I know someone whose abuelito had, you know, he had his whole family in Mexico, and then it was like a young girl. But he, I mean, he was up there, like in his. 70s, oh mid 70s, having babies and things. He's not rich, you know, any of that. You know, I don't, I don't know that. I think it's, hmm, it's a tricky subject because I feel like, yes, they can, but also, how fair is it to that child? That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, how fair feel. is it to that child that maybe bring yeah, your dad, okay. bring your parents to? School for show and tell, and they're walking with Actually, the cane that, and shit. That, you know, really, so yeah, that famous. There's, yeah, go ahead. there's, a, there's a lot that goes into that. I do fully think that having a kid is is something that shouldn't ever be taken lightly. It's such it's a so huge responsibility. Yeah. Oh my god. Um, on and it should be on both people. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. for the longest time, that responsibility has been more more so on the women's yeah. shoulders, and more so now. I feel like like guys are stepping up and wanting to be yeah, more involved yeah. and I applaud that yeah. not to say that men haven't done that because they have but it it does need to be more of like a a 50-50 and that also relies on us as women allowing them to step up and allowing them to mm. maybe they're not going to do it the way that you would do it as a mommy or maybe they're not but they need to show up however they can and they need to be applauded for that yeah. and, and you know because because if every time a guy and again, this isn't me just like throwing in the towel for guys, but uh-uh. Um, but if if every time a guy comes to do that, they're like, you're doing it wrong. Like, of course they're not gonna wanna do it. Of course. Okay, but back to the conversation about older men having children, I think it's not ethical. And because again, think of the role that men play in somebody's life. If they're that much older, do they have energy. the energy? They can you they, play catch? Can, no, yeah, you can't not. do anything. Yeah, you can't, you can't do anything. Run around. You can't but take them with Chuck E. Cheese and can't do take them down a slide. Okay, how do you deal with parents asking about when you're going to give them grandbabies? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Let me tell you, ladies. <laughs> You don't pick up the phone. No. <laughs> no, I, you know what, this, this is, that's, mm, that's a, a tough one for me because, again, I've been with my husband for 19 years. I've known him since we were in high school. We've been married now for 10 and we have decided that we are potentially not going to have kids because we, we like our life the way it is, because we know that it takes a village, and our village is 3,000 miles mm. away in Puerto Rico. Um, because I am very career-oriented, because we love having our nephews and then just giving them right back and going <laughs> home and like being in silence and all these things, I, I think that, that you have to set boundaries, because at the end of the day, there's a, there's a saying in Spanish that says, like, menos en Puerto Rico, it says, nadie sabe lo que tiene la olla, Mm. Hasta el que la, el man, menos el que la menea. Like nobody knows what's in the pot except for the one that's stirring it. Mm -hmm. um, and that applies, you know, for, for us in our lives. Like I, I, I live in a one bedroom apartment. I, I don't, I personally, me, Melissa, I don't want to have a child in a one bedroom apartment. I don't want to have a child if I can't provide yeah. at least the minimum the, what I was provided for. Yeah. Yeah. Which nowadays with inflation, like all Ugh. these, like mm. I can't afford the house my parents afforded I, with the backyard <laughs> that they gave close. me. Like it's it's crazy, you know. So it's all so these things. Different. That's what I'm saying. Like it is such, it it requires so much responsibility going into that. And not to say that I can't change my mind. Mm -hmm. Who knows? Who knows? You know. But like it, it's one of those things. Like they had to back off. And at some point, we were like. I told my husband at once, I was like, I'm just gonna tell your mom at one point that maybe, maybe I just can't have kids. See what she reacts, see Ooh. how she reacts. Yeah. Because nobody just... knows, nobody knows, right? Like, what if that is my situation? It's not, but what if it were? Yeah. That's the situation of many women. And that needs to be respected. And you, you never know what you buttons you're pushing. Still parents. 
<laughs> yeah, Yo, but you never you know what laugh. buttons you're pushing, you know, yeah, on no, somebody, and it and it can it can wreak havoc. Well, and for me, it's totally different. Ooh, I've never had any pressure off. from yeah. my Ooh, mom. Same. Um, I think it's also because I started acting as a kid, so like me and her are both get been get career get focused, mm -hmm. you know. So mm -hmm. like for me, it was like don't this and don't 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 same, don't don't. Same, right. And so I'm like, I've never felt that pressure. Yeah, it's tough. I don't know. On on my end, my mom definitely pressures me a lot, and. My situation is different because that's, I think, going to be my biggest fulfillment in life. I think that's like my biggest Being dream. My biggest, biggest, mm -hmm. biggest dream that's is to be a mom. mom, is to be like at home. Um, so when my mom tells me, I do get like, stop. Like, I, I get where you're coming from, but I think it's on God's time. It's right. not on my time. Mm -hmm. I just haven't found somebody that I feel like has a line with me in that you're way. You're so young. Yeah, I feel, I feel young, but my mom you're makes so me young. feel like it's the end of the world. My mom had her first baby at 17. Yeah. She, by my age, she had four kids, right. you know? By my age, she was Different like full-blown mom, and that's the dream. You know, yeah. hopefully one day we'll, you know, on God's time, but. <laughs> I love that, though. I love that you have that, that desire, yeah. you oh my gosh, know? And time. I feel like that's also something that we as women need to recognize in ourselves. Like, just because society says that, Oh, by a certain age, you should have this or have that. Mm -hmm. Society don't pay for bills, so like if, yeah. if and it's one of those things. Like, I have never had that feeling. Yeah, I have yeah. never. And, and I have friends that that have. And I, I even last night I was sitting in bed with my husband. I was like, man, I don't know if maybe I'm missing out on something. He's mm -hmm. like, but you've never had that desire. desire yeah. Does well, he? okay. No, like, and I told him I was like, but you're so good with kids. He's like, yeah, but I like giving them back, yeah. and it's yeah. you know, and it's just it's just being honest, being yeah. honest with yourself and not not um, forgoing like your desires and what you know to be true yeah. for you just because it works for everybody yeah, else. Yeah, just because yeah. that's the narrative or that's like what's happening or, that's, or being yeah, pushed like right you now. Really, I had one friend one time um, tell me, she's like, if you don't really, really want it, don't, don't do, do it. it. Yeah. yeah. Well, okay, after a quick break, we'll be back with Track the Growth. But first, 73% of our viewers on social voted that they are in favor of situationships. They oh, are, oh, really? Wow. Yo, people want their, their, wow. their they want their cake and they, they want to eat it too. Exactly. I mean, I love cake, so yeah. Wow. I, mean, I can't. Guys. I can't. But yeah, we'll be back with Track the Growth right after this. What are you seeing on your timeline? What's your algorithm looking like? Mm -hmm. If it's just a of bombarded of a lot of women, it does actually affect a man day to day. And they, they are saying, studies are saying that a lot of the times men are now becoming a little bit more numb to how beautiful women are because of the sexualization of Instagram, mm -hmm. of social media. First of all, I'm gonna just put this out there. Try to find you guys a man that looks at you more than he looks at his phone. Right. Let, me just, let me just start with that. What's up, guys? We are back. Before Melissa leaves, we're yes. going to have a little bit of mold wine. Have you guys ever had mold wine before? I've never I, even heard of it. I have. So good. I have. You have? It's warm and spicy. All yeah. right, well, cheers. 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 I've never had it before. Let's see what Los ojos, los ojos. Ay, yeah, los importante, importante. Okay. Oh, my gosh. I already know I'm going to love it. Oh, that's strong. Mmm, that's strong. <laughs> Yummy. Oh, yeah. That's really good. It's my type of holiday drink right yeah. there. Yeah. He's like, I need. I feel like I, I need. I, like I feel like I need. You don't. You don't love it. <laughs> you don't like it. I, I feel so. like I need um, a snow. blanket. <laughs> snow. snow. Fire crackling. Ooh, fire crack. I am such Cookies a sucker. Cookies in the oven. I'm such a sucker for all things holiday. And then and then a good um, holiday movie. Wait, what's in it? Mm. It's wine. Oh, you know. But what kind of wine? It's wine. red wine. Red wine. Red wine. Dry wine. Uh huh. Brandy. Brandy. Oranges. Cinnamon sticks and mold spices. Oh. I think the brandy is what I don't like, cause uh, TMI, but the only time I drank brandy was at a high school flyer party and I had just Why? ate a couple noodles and oh I don't know how to drink brandy. So like I took a shot of it and I threw up my oh. noodles. You know what I don't think you like? So I don't I'm think like, you like this. The there's anise. just like little, I love it. you know what I mean? <laughs> okay, so I have a really interesting topic that we were kind of talking about when we went into the green room to do our hair and makeup and all mm -hmm. that stuff. This is, about being in a relationship with someone or talking to a guy, the first thing that a lot of women do, I don't want to say every woman, but a lot, what a lot of women do is see who the guy's following, who are they, kind of what are they about. I'm not like going to say researching here, him. Researching, researching just him. like who, who he is, like what kind of that content are you consuming? Who he's following. What, what? Well, who you're following, that's the stuff that you're viewing and allowing into your psyche, into your mind, into your heart. You, you, so I you're think saying I'm following all girls and models think, and things like that. 
what would you feel? I think we underestimate saying? how much that can affect a person. So you're looking not at even all just men. I'm not, I'm not saying just men, it's men and women. Mm -hmm. What are you seeing on your timeline? What's your algorithm looking like? Mm -hmm. If it's just of bombarded of a lot of women all the time, half naked, half imagine, posing, imagine. that's what they're looking at all the time. So we have to also think, I know we all want to be like, no, it doesn't matter to me, but it does. I think it does matter and I think it does actually affect a man day to day and they they are saying studies are saying that a lot of the times men are now becoming a little bit more numb to how beautiful women are because of the sexualization of Instagram mm -hmm. of social media is that something that bothers you guys well first of all i'm going to just put this out there try to find you guys a man that looks at you more than he looks at his phone let, right. me, just, let me just start with that second like i don't i social media is such a mm -hmm. mm, such an insane world right um I, thankfully, and it goes ahead, and my husband's very much into video games, so that's where he spends most of his attention, mm. not so much on social media. And when he's on social media, we're just sending each other, like, cute puppy videos and shit like that, <laughs> you know? Um, but I have, if it were if it were the case, because we were talking about it just now, and I have found, like, that his friends send him photos of stuff and, like, that maybe I don't need him to be looking at. But I also be like, oh, who's that? Oh. Oh, oh, and I'll, I'll look at it too, you know? That's because what my mom says. My mom says that when my dad checks, he, my dad's been checking out girls his whole life. He just, he's just that kind of guy. That she started checking them out before he even could Right. Move. So like, she would walk by and she'd be like, okay. and they would both do it together. Yeah. Like it was like a and that's the thing. thing. Like, I, I, can, I can very much sit here and as a strong female heterosexual woman, like I like my men and my husband, like I can appreciate a woman's beauty. Of course. I can look at another woman. You were talking woman. about my butt just a couple I minutes ago. I was. <laughs> I was like, it's pump and juicy and it's great. And like juicy. I am one to sit down with my and and I I don't want to be in a relationship where I don't feel like myself. Totally. And for me to feel like myself, I have to be secure AF. Yeah. You have you to know? be so secure. Well, and it and goes when into they the layers. see those, it, exactly, when they see those things, it's one of those things where it's like. Mm, you have it better here, honey. You just look at whatever you want, but it's, yeah. Yeah. you're not yeah. going to find better than me. Kind and, of and then it's also, again, you can look all you want. You're not going to do anything. Exactly. And knowing that you're and not going to do anything. And that's the security of do you it, feel right? like it. Do you feel like it, and this is just me playing devil's advocate. Do, mm -hmm. you think, do you feel like it could open a potential door to maybe something happening? Let's say you're going through a really tough time and you're not secure in your relationship. Yep. And then all of a sudden you're like, well, I don't want to deal with this person. Let me scroll. Let me see. Hmm, maybe things are better over that's, here. And you're bombarded. Do you know what I mean? When, that's when the commitment. Comes in. The That's commitment. when the commitment the trust comes commitment in. The love. trust comes yeah. in. The honesty comes in. I've always thought that when people cheat, when people deviate, it is because either things have not been said or they haven't been listened to. Because you can be in a relationship, right? And you can you can say to your partner, "Hey, this is happening. Hey, I'm feeling this and this. I'm feeling X and Y. I don't. I am not getting this from you." And if they don't react to what you're saying, if they don't listen that will cause a void in that relationship, yeah. which is what then will cause you to go looking for that somewhere yeah. else. Again, not to like um, applaud not or to make justify. It okay. yeah. Exactly, I am not justifying it's cheating, a or, but about it is it. an effect of a problem that has not been Solved. adequately addressed. Yeah. Let's track the growth. Here we have cutouts of our beautiful faces. You guys, oh my gosh. everybody. Take some. Ooh, okay. Wait. And we're gonna there's use so many. we're gonna use them to vote. Oh. Okay. Okay. Wait. There's so much. I'm gonna more. ask some questions. Wait, here's you guys. some. I think okay. these are for you. These are for you. All right. Y'all ready to play? Mm -hmm. Yes. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Who's the biggest rebel against societal norms? Oh, that's a hard one. Oh. Oh, 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 oh. I. I. Did, uh, me. Oh, okay. Okay. What? So two for you. So you win. I think. Okay. Right? Yeah. Because like I that? think you saying. That you know you don't care about having I mean, not that you don't care about it, but like kids is not a thing. You actually like, yeah, I would say yeah, that. you yourself. Oh, yeah, like, you know what? marriage, long distance, like being right. with somebody for eighteen Yo. years, like those are all things that I changed my vote too. Exactly, like, you're vote. living. You're happy. <laughs> I agree with you. Yeah, I feel like you're living a very happy, very carefree, content. like secure life. Okay. I agree with you. I, so you win. I take that back. I put myself up. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the most likely to have it all figured out? <laughs> Just well, I am up. the oldest at the table, so I'm let's just say me. that. I feel like I know my life and I know I what I want. I think you do. I, I think you do. I think so too. I'm and I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna do this because you know what? Aww. We all learn, and hey. when you learn, you grow, and you just keep evolving. So hey, all of y'all.
I like that. I like it too. Yeah. That's sweet. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I'm still trying to figure it out, but. <laughs> okay, it's Melissa. Part of it. Well, the I know time it's, has come. It's sad to say goodbye. Dumb, but we, I just want to say I learned so much, and it's yeah. so inspirational to have a woman. I'm not saying that you're older like that, but just more have experienced life and is and is like a mentor, you know, Aww, to us and you. has and isn't living like the traditional life, but it still has like all their ducks in a row and is happy and like it just shows an alternative that a lot of people like me and Jess who come from very traditional Colombian families yeah. don't get to see very often. Yeah, thank so you. thank you for inspiring yeah. us. Aww, yeah, really thank you for coming that. on girl. I giving you your flowers. That so much. Yes. Like I the the thing that like moves me and what has always moved me is Ever since I want to start, it's my why is to be able to inspire people Aww. to like follow their dreams and like dare to maybe go outside of what the box. Yeah, yeah. you know, because even a, a career like this in arts as an actor isn't necessarily the first choice mm -hmm. for parents when they think what they want their kid to be. But yeah. if it's in your heart, it's something that you need to do and trusting your gut and all those things like. They just lead you to it. So I always Absolutely. feel like when you wake up and you're doing what you need to do, you're happy and everything yes. else kind of falls into place. Yes. So Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Guys. Like, where can we find you? Where can people follow you what's to next? get information for what's next for you? Well, I think the, the place that maybe I connect the most is on Instagram. I'm not really, I'm, here's where my age comes in, you guys. Like, I'm not really, I'm not on TikTok. I'm yeah, not on, yeah. like, any of the old, I'm on Instagram and Facebook. <laughs> well, that's a good thing. Um, One less thing to be addicted to, scrolling. At Melly Marty is, Melly is Marty. my tag, so go mm -hmm. follow. Follow her. All right, you guys, well, that's it for this episode of Girl, Let Me Tell You. Melissa, thank, thank you so you. much. Thank it was you, girl. So yes. Uh, girl, let me and tell you. <laughs> <laughs> and Chelsea, thank you so much again for being a host on this oh, yes. episode. I love it, I love it. We I are love so happy you we learned a lot, and we will be back very soon for the next episode. I'm Ivana. I'm Meli Marti. I'm Jessica. I am Chelsea Rendon. And, and this, this is Girl, Girl Let, Let Me Tell, Tell you. you. I ruined it. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say girl long enough. <laughs>